On this stand, we're dealing with the impact of technology implementation on achieving our performance targets within grass-based beef production systems. Nationally, failure to achieve our performance targets is a serious cause of inefficiency within our beef production systems. In terms of animal performance targets, there are three main factors interrelated that are driving this performance. These are namely animal genetics, animal nutrition and animal health. In terms of animal genetics, we're talking about selecting the most appropriate breed type for your system and then within that, identifying the animals with the highest genetic merit for the traits of importance. In terms of animal nutrition then, we're talking because of the relatively low cost of grazed grass as a feedstuff, we're talking about maximizing high digestibility grass within our systems, optimizing grass silage consumption and minimizing concentrate consumption, mainly through strategic supplementation at key time points. In terms of animal health then, it all starts with a healthy calf. This, from this perspective, we must ensure that the calf has a good passive immune status and this is achieved by a good colostrum management. After this, we must ensure that the calf or the animal has an appropriate environment and we use appropriate health management strategies throughout its lifetime. As a general rule, disease prevention is better than cure. Because these factors are interrelated, we must ensure that the three systems are managed accordingly, such that we achieve our production targets. Failure in one of these three can have a negative impact on profitability and performance. So ultimately then, we'll be dealing with all these in the village later on today, and you will see, see practical demonstrations on these as well. So what are the implications then of achieving our performance targets uh, on uh, profitability and greenhouse gas emissions? This is depicted here in this graph where we have a number of beef systems. On the left, we have a suckler calf to beef system, a spring calving suckler calf to beef system. In the middle, we have a suckler weaning to beef system. And on the far end here, we have a dairy calf to beef system. On the purple bar, we're looking, it denotes the percentage change in dent margin per livestock unit or animal. On the green bar, we have the percentage change in greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram carcass. And then over here, we have an additional metric, a greenhouse gas emissions per animal. So in the suckler calf to beef system then, we've picked five perfor our performance targets, namely reducing age at first calving. So we're going from 36 to 24 months of age, increasing our calving rate, going from 0.85 calves per cow per year up to 0.95, reducing our calving interval from 400 to 365 days, increasing our grazing season length by about three weeks, and increasing animal lifetime average daily gain by about 50 grams per day. In all cases, we find that improving our performance targets results in an increase in profitability and a corresponding simultaneous reduction in greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram carcass. So clearly this inverse relationship is a win-win is a situation and it bodes well in terms of meeting our national greenhouse reduction targets. Over here then in our last two systems, we're looking at the effect of reducing finishing age by approximately one month during the indoor winter finishing period. In other words, our finishing age comes more in line with the systems you'll see here today. When we look at our suckler weaning to beef system, we find reducing finishing age by one month increases our profitability and we get a corresponding reduction in greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram carcass or our footprint, but also per animal. On our dairy calf to beef system, we don't get any impact on profitability from reducing slaughter age by one month, but we do get the corresponding reduction in greenhouse gas emissions again per kilogram carcass and per animal. And again, this ties in nicely with our national greenhouse gas emission reduction strategies. So overall, our key message here is essentially achieving performance targets results in increased profitability and reduced carbon footprint. Now I'm going to hand you over to my colleague Aidan Murray and he'll deal with the technologies available to achieve these performance targets. Okay, thanks very much, Mark. Well, look, uh, as Mark already pointed out, we're in a one-one situation. If we achieve our performance targets, we're improving profitability overall, but we're also reducing our carbon footprint, which is one of the key targets we have. So look, if we're going to be monitoring performance targets and seeing what direction we're going, we're going to need some technology, some tools in the toolbox to be able to get a handle on what's happening on farm level in, in particular. And luckily, uh, you know, uh, from the beef sector, we have a lot of uh, stuff available, some of it totally underutilized, some of it very well utilized, but we need to use them all if we're going to hit uh, the, the targets that Mark talked about. And we just 
to carry on from what Mark was saying in terms of the sort of four key areas in terms of animal performance, grassland, animal health and genetics. If we look first of all in terms of the animal performance targets, for a number of years now we've had on-farm weighing, we have farm weight reports, weaning efficiency reports uh, uh, available through ICBF uh, and that uh, with regard to that. We have electronic tagging which was brought in uh, mandatory a number of years ago probably underutilised but the scope is there to make better use of that and capture information on a more regular basis. We have a number of hard herd management apps where you know while we're out on farm doing jobs and that we can record if we see an animal served uh, or, or, or if an animal is AI'd we can record sickness so we're getting much more information uh, much more conveniently by using some of these herd apps and the other thing is it's very well you know, uh, at the first stand you heard about a number of different systems out there, uh, uh, particularly on the beef side, but over the years there's been research done here uh, on the various systems and there's a number of blueprints that have been, uh, that are available to monitor animal performance at each of the critical stages throughout that what the feed required, uh, uh, what the cost of the production and what are the key areas that you need to target in order to drive that performance and that. On the genetic side, look, we're renowned for our work on, in genomics. We're after going through a national uh, gen, uh, genomics program there in the autumn time. So we have a lot of information available on the bulls we're using, the stock bulls we're buying and the cows and, and, and our suckler herds uh, 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 and that which is vitally important if we're to keep selecting animals that are more efficient and, and are leaving that sort of lower carbon footprint. One of the big game changers that has come out in the last couple of, in the last uh, few years is this commercial beef value, where we're looking at the beef traits of the animal uh, to assess, you know, what the beef merit of that animal is going forward. Particularly important in the dairy calf to beef where you know when you're buying a calf at three weeks of age you don't know what the dam can bring or the bulls bring into to it uh, and therefore what I call it it gives you an idea as to what the, the genetic uh, beef and potential of that animal is and you'll see a lot of that there's a live demonstration ICBF are there talking at that throughout the stand we have our Eurostar indices uh, that's there on, on our cows and, uh, uh, and on our bulls again you know, whether you're a Wienland system, whether you're a finishing system, whether you're producing that Wienland for export, there's enough sub-indexes within, uh, within the indices there to be able to pick the correct animals to do the job that you want uh, and that combine that with the ICBF reports. And one of the other big features that we have available, and it's taken off slowly, but it is taken off, we see more of it this year, is the use of sex semen even within the beef herd. And it has a role because people that want to keep their herds closed breed uh, their own replacement females, but maybe their real focus is on the terminal traits. They can select individual cows with maybe female semen, uh, sex semen, to try and breed their replacements and then turn the rest of the herd uh, towards the terminal traits. Mark mentioned animal health and having a healthy animal. Absolute cornerstone of any of the production systems. You'll see that on the dairy beef. You'll see it on the suckler side. We've got the beef health check reports where animals' are, livers and lungs are assessed going through the factory. We've a number have had a number of programs and a lot of research done on early calf health. Again, you'll see that demonstrated today. We're seeing ongoing improvement in vaccine ranges. This year, we see the likes of Cryptosporidia uh, vaccine coming on stream which is the, 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 the first time that that has been available and that will continue to develop and that will have to develop uh, if we're going to use uh, and have less antibiotics available to us going forward, that it's going to be much more, as Mark mentioned earlier, prevention being better than, than, than cure. Uh, I, uh, Animal Health Ireland have a parasite support program uh, or a parasite TESA where we're using more targeted antihelminthic use and we also have the likes of the BVD eradication which we're near the end game with regard to that in terms of reducing the number of PAs, but the significant effect that that has had uh, as it, from a country point of view is that we see a lot less sickness in that early calf stage, a lot lower mortality and a lot less antibiotic use. And then the key thing that is the cornerstone for all our beef production in the country is grassland. We have a, 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 the, the grass and the forage village over here uh, that you'll go through on the way, uh, uh, on the way uh, around the, the circuit today. But, you know, we're, doing so, we're measuring soil health. We're looking at the, the, the carbon levels. We're looking at the NPK, pH. So soil testing uh, and that, hugely important. 
every farm going forward, because of the, the worry of excess use of nitrogen, P and K, will all be working towards nutrient management planning. Key tool that we have for every farmer out there, uh, and it'll target where the P and the K and the nutrients need to go, and what, what ground will just need maintenance levels, and what, what ground will, will get, away out, uh, get away without excess of P or, or whatever. You'll see the, the lads over here will be talking about grass covers and, and measures uh, and that Pasture Base Ireland, again, an online system that if for those farms that are, particularly the well-stocked farms that are paddock, that, that want to do rotational grazing, it's nearly a must-have tool to be able to utilise grass uh, and, and make the most uh, in terms of, of what pasture can deliver. You know, producing your grass wage, looking at your, your pasture covers, giving your own farm growth rates and production targets for, for the year. And then, you know, for any of those that are interested in the reseeding, there's been a, the developed the pasture profit index where they're looking at the most profitable grassland varieties under the various uh, growing conditions that are available in the, in the country. And, you know, and it's a key guide when you're putting grass mixes together uh, and that to try and improve your, your overall production. And then on the on the, the newer some of the newer areas that we're looking at is you've got your white clovers and your red clovers. Red clover probably more in, uh, interest in it uh, uh, because the the work on the white clovers has been ongoing for years, uh, and that and you'll see that demonstrated over here uh, as you go around. And some of the work that's done on multi-species swards uh, as well again demonstrated. Some of these technologies will suit your farm. Some of them, after seeing what they have to provide today, you'll say, no, that's not for me, but it's all out there. And look, we're trying to support all of these, these technologies with an advisory program on the ground. So all of these, the Dairy Beef 500, the Tipperary Dairy Calf, the Beef Farm, uh, you know, the, uh, the Future Beef on the Suckler side, the Newford, and then the Sign Pros program, which looks at all the environmental issues. These are all out there. They're all working on commercial farms. They're all farms that you can visit and demonstrate best practice. And the beauty about it is they're in all different parts of the country. So to make it relevant to where you're from. So look, the, you know, as a sector, there's lots of technologies. As I say, some of them are underutilized. And I suppose we're lucky in a way uh, in the beef side and, and in agriculture in general. Look, we have a lot of support and most of the key players in the system are, are collaborating and are working together. You've got the department, you've got ICBF, you've Animal Health Ireland, you've Board Bay, you're Chagas. We're all talking to one another to try and provide a better income from everyone. So look, there's lots to be, lots to see uh, and hear and lots of demonstrations as you go around. Make the most of it and hopefully you'll have an enjoyable day.